What is going on, everybody? This is AJ Capasso, host of Talking with the Source. I'm here with my other host. Robin from Hufford Paranormal. Oh, you didn't do your Robin? <clears throat> no, it's Robin. Oh, there we go. There we go. See, I'm lucky. I didn't get that today. Anyway, I want my friend down below to introduce himself. I want him to tell us a little bit about himself if he could. He should tell the viewers a little bit about himself since we haven't actually got to have him on just him alone. Um, yet. So please, my friend, introduce yourself to the viewers. No, my name is Aaron Hoffman. Uh, a lot of people out there know me as The Shadow. I uh, I am the creator, uh, co-creator and host for Spectre Radio Paranormal Podcast. I am the creator of A View Beyond Paranormal Magazine. And I also have um, a production service that I kind of run, uh, Grave Digger Productions. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we are super happy that you were able to come on, man. I didn't know who was able to come on, so I was just happy that someone was able to. And when I saw that right. it was you, I was like, yes, man, this is awesome. Um, please tell everybody about A View Beyond real quick, man, where they can you know get the latest and everything like that, please. Yeah, uh, A View Beyond, it's the Paranormal Magazine, of course, but uh, it's not just any Paranormal Mag. It's for the Paranormal Community by the Paranormal Community. And the whole idea is that uh, anybody in the field, regardless if you are a psychic medium, paranormal investigator, if you're into uh, ghost, cryptid, UFOs, whatever it is, if you have an article or great photo capture, send it to me at a view beyond magazine at gmail.com and I will do what I can to get you in the mag because the magazine is not for the community without the community itself. Absolutely. Hell yeah. And That's you can awesome. find that magazine at www dot avb magazine.com awesome awesome i am super happy that you plugged that in man because people need to hear about this magazine um you know it's one of those magazines you know just like a couple friends that we had on the show earlier that is about the community and you know things that you mm -hmm. do with it man are absolutely awesome um it's Thank i was you. super happy that i got to meet you and um now working with you with global ghost hunt which shout out absolutely. to global ghost hunt so, absolutely uh, shout out it's a global ghost hunt. We got our first year coming up. It's uh, running around soon almost. It's uh, May, so me and Aaron are mm -hmm. stuck doing a lot of stuff. I know, Aaron, you're plugging a lot of stuff in. Um, how's that working out for you? Oh, it's working out pretty good. You know, um, this is uh, going to be an interesting event because it's the chance where we get to showcase the teams and the locations as well as the evidence. Yep. Um, you know, because, I mean, nothing against YouTube. But YouTube streams a lot of their stuff after the fact. Global Ghost Hunt, we're going to stream it as it happens. So this is going to be really exciting. Now, do you have a list of the places where we're going to actually be streaming it yet? Because I haven't actually been able to talk to anybody about that yet, and I wanted to. I know we haven't had any release of it yet, but I wanted to see if maybe you had a little something-something to give. Um, I do know that uh, there will be streams uh, through the, if I'm not mistaken, through the Global Ghost Hunt site. Uh, I know uh, there's also potential talk about uh, having it simulcast to uh, Parapost. Awesome. Um, you know, but I mean, right now, everything is still kind of in a development point. You know, we still got teams registering. We still have locations that are joining in. So uh, we won't really know until we get closer to the date. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I that's what I told some of the teams that asked. And um, I, uh, I just let them know, you know, once we have the list out, the list will be out. Just like every time we have a sponsor mm -hmm. that we uh, get, which um, I believe, you know, we just had one recently that was a couple months ago that we released. Uh, what was it? Paraflix was one, all right? Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, we, we have a lot of good things that are coming to Global. And, you know, we're working off a tail end of uh, another company that didn't really do, that's not really doing their job. And so it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a scary thing, but it's a great thing because we have a great team. We're going to take care of these people. We're going to take care of these teams. And we're going to have a great event, man. I'm so, so pumped in. I'm glad to be a part of it with you. Um, and uh, you know, also, Robin, I was glad to be a part of it with you. I know you had to step away. I know, you know, the wife. Yeah, you know. I've, <clears throat> for, for anybody watching, I have had to step away. I uh, didn't want to, but I've had to for the, for the first one. Hopefully, I'll be back on board for October. If not for October, then definitely for next year. But. I want to be back on board ASAP. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like I told you, man, you know, family comes first. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you always have to put family first because you can replace anything, but family is something you can't replace. And, um, you know, ever since I, I lost mine, it's, uh, it's, it's been a real eye-opener when I see people that are dealing with something like yourself and uh, your, your family. So, um, sure, sure. But, um, right. glad to have you, man. Glad to have worked with you. Glad I still work with you. Obviously, you're my best friend. Um, but anyway, guys, Aaron, what, I want to ask you a question. What's your most profound paranormal experience that you've had? Well, I can't really just uh, pin it to just one because each one was unique in their own way. Um, but the few that have been, uh, you know, unforgettable, one would be at a place called Wabasha Street Caves here in Minnesota. Yeah, the caves have a long history. They were used for bootlegging, moonshine running, uh, you know, a lot of criminal activity back then. Yeah. Um, then in the 80s and 90s, it became a place where people would engage in ritual activities and things like that. So these caves have a really, you know, dark history. And I was out there with some friends of mine. And uh, one time, there's this one set of caves that had collapsed in on itself. And we broke, you know, we walked in and I looked up around the edges and I, I swear I saw cloaked figures. And it oh, freaked wow. me out so bad that I started walking away. And, uh -huh. you know, next thing I know, the 15 other people that were with me, they started running because they saw the same thing. Hey, I would have totally probably run myself. I mean, hey, yeah. well, even if you're, you know, a seasoned paranormal investigator, if you find, if you see something that freaks you out, you get that feeling, you're running. I don't care who you are. Right. You know? But after you run, you may stop halfway and go, oh my God, I got to turn around and capture that and then miss it. But you will at first get scared and, and, and freak out. At least I well, know I do. And I, I know a couple other friends that do as well. So, yeah. Well, yeah. we'll make this, what makes it interesting is that, I refused to go back for almost 30 years. Wow. And when I finally went back a couple of years ago with uh, my team, Nightwatch, uh, this was before we disbanded, uh, I went back there and I said, the one cave I do not want to find is the cave that's called the altar. And the altar, is, is you, first you walk in and then it kind of gets narrow and you kind of have to do a belly crawl into an opening and then it opens up. And on the back wall, there's an altar that carved out of the sandstone and there are notches cut out to hold five candles in a pentagram pen, uh, pattern. Um, well, I went there a couple of years ago and I said, I don't want to find this place. And along the road, they, they try to blast most of them shut or to seal them off because uh, some kids have died from cyanide poisoning in the cave a few years ago. So they blasted a lot of them shut and they had these arrow pointing up to where the cave used to be. We saw one, climbed up the face, and sure enough, I see the markings around the cave. I was like, damn it, it's the altar. Oh, my God. And uh, if you see the Global Ghost Hunt promo, the new one, uh, the very end where you see the spirit box being held over the cave, is there anyone here? Then you hear it say yes. Yep. That's me at uh, the entrance to the altar that they had tried to seal off. Wow. Wow, that has to be a crazy place, dude. Because I, I, I tell you what, that looked like a crazy place just from the video. I mean, it, it I, was. Now, tell me, where, is that like in the middle of nowhere, or is that like somewhere no, populated, or it, it's right along the Mississippi River in the middle of St. Paul, Minnesota? Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, do you know uh, like a lot of the history to it, like to the place? Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, a lot of it was uh, used for uh, bootleggers. During yeah, the 20s I mean, and like, 30s. Do you know any history of any murders or anything that happened there? Like, so yeah, there's been a few murders, few murders out there. Um, okay. There was the case of a homeless guy uh, raping and killing a girl out there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, it. In, in that part of St. Paul, aside from the Wabacha Street Cave venue, where a lot of people have their weddings or party, uh, which is a unique place in itself, that place is also haunted. But that whole area... Um, during the daytime, it's a beautiful place. They got a park, but at night, that's when you start to see a lot of the, uh, you know, criminal element come out because it's so rarely patrolled. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> You're muted. Okay, yeah.
Sorry, I was trying to say, okay. I apologize. I'm yeah. getting used to using a desktop again. Um, oh. I'm so used to using my phone, you know? Um, uh, sorry about that. But what I was going to say no was problem. you guys have a lot of places out where you are that, um, you know, have a lot of, like, history and location where you can go to an investment, or is it a lot of, oh, like, yeah. Mission? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, not too far from where I live is a small town called Anoka. And the word Anoka is actually uh, two Native American words that uh, translates into meeting meeting place by the river. Okay. And uh, Anoka has suffered major cat- uh, catastrophes. One of them was a fire that literally wiped out the town from the river up seven blocks up. 85 buildings were destroyed. There are two buildings that are still standing that survived the fire. And they're the original brick and mortar uh, oh. built from the 1800s. Um, and with as much as, the, as much history that's gone on there and all the tragic tragedy that's happened there, in my experience, it is one of the few locations that is extremely haunted per square mile because of everything that's happened all over the place. Wow. You know, that like certain places, you know, in New York or out in California or down in New Orleans, when you have a town that has so many negative things happen in such a small space you're bound to find all kinds of weird things happening at the same time. Yeah. I tell you what, see, I see, I hear about so many of these places that are, um, you know, out more West towards me, um, out West from me. And I want to go so bad. Um, mm-hmm. some place, I mean, Waverly is one of my top places I've always wanted to go to, but there's mm-hmm. so many places across the U S man that I just, Oh, you know, me and Raymond have talked about it and we've been like, uh, he's like, Oh yeah. You know, I live close to Waverly. I'm like, what? I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so jealous. Um, Speaking of which, though, so you're saying about caves. <clears throat> I've just found out uh, earlier today uh, from one of my Facebook friends who put pictures on of a cave system about 40 miles away from me. And I'm not going to say where it is. People will probably know when I say this, but I'm not going to say where it is. Uh, and these caves were used in the war for, uh, excuse me, for like a weapons uh, storage, mm. but they, they are they are hundreds of years old and they actually go way, way deep in. Now, rumor has it that in the 1600s or 1700s, four kids went in and only one came back out. And apparently the one that came back out and survived said that uh, there was these little little figures, he called them. He didn't even call them humans. He called them little figures, like dwarfs. And they were, they were talking in this kind of language that nobody had ever heard before. And apparently this kid says that he barely got out because one of them was grabbing his foot. But what the Daxi did was they sent the army at the time into the caves to search for the kids because they thought, oh, this is ridiculous. And right. they sent them in and they found all the kids' bones completely stripped bare of anything, just bone. And again, what you said a minute ago, Aaron, they reckon that there's a, a church way, way deep in there on an altar, but <clears throat> they're not sure whether they... Uh, right. Apparently, what they did was when they heard about these these beings, they they blasted part of it the, for it to cave in so that people wouldn't obviously die in there and, and whatever. Right. But apparently when you go in there, you can hear these voices of all this language that you've never heard before. You know, we have something similar to that here in America. We refer to them as uh, Tommy Knockers. Yeah. Uh, small creatures that live in the cave and um, a lot of time, if you bring them a gift, they'll leave you be. Uh, but most of the time, they are very territorial. So that sounds like something similar to what you're talking about. Yeah, well, these these kids, apart, although, although it was a couple of hundred years ago, these right. kids went, went in, just obviously they were playing about in the area, and, mm. and obviously came across these kids and thought, oh, we'll go and explore these. And they've went in. I, I'm not too sure on the on the full extent of the story. So... I don't know just how, 
right. it went. But from what I, from what I've been told, it's they've went in here, they've came across these little people, or if you want to call them, they've mm-hmm. turned to run away. Three of them have, have been grabbed. The other one has has run as fast as he can, basically. That right. He's been chased by these, and when he got to the entrance, one of them had his foot. And I can't remember whether they said he came out with only one shoe, whether he must have got away or whatever. But they, the apparently at the time, the the people in the area and stuff were like, you know, nah, load of nonsense, no. But then it was a case of right, well, where's these other three kids in? So right. they could say. The, they got some of the army, and apparently the army came out and said that they wouldn't go back in again. They see these figures. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. I've watched this, this channel on YouTube called Night God. He does like all conspiracy theories. He does all different types of like dragons, creatures, like everything you could possibly think of. That's just you know weird. And right. uh, he gets these videos from all over the world sent to him, and he posts them. And there was a post of these little creatures that, in a different country, I can't remember what country offhand now. I think it was like down in like Mexico somewhere. And he's this. They had a little creature that they kept, and like it was a little person. Like I mean, when I mean little, it was like this big. Like, and so right. I know exactly what you're talking about when you say Tommy Knockers because he actually said that name in the video. So when you say that, mm-hmm. I can picture it right in my right in my head. And he's these little things like will run out and steal your stuff and like stuff according to yeah. this video. I was like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. I would love to see one of them, you know? Yeah. I mean, it train one to go into a bank. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. Go Tommy. Right. Knocker. Sorry. Sorry. No, it, it just, you know, uh, when you look at the, you know, places that have caves and you hear the story of, you know, you know, thing that were happening around them, you know, and it's not just like, you know, small creature, but there are stories of giant who haven't yeah. been involved with each cave, you know, uh, yeah. a real popular one here in America called the Lovelock Cave. And this is where allegedly they had killed a bunch of giants and, you know, choked them out with, by building a fire at the entrance. Um, bones haven't been found there, but then the mainstream academia tried to, you know, cover it up and pass it off as just a legend with no actual evidence. Wow. And yet when these evidence are found, you'll see pictures of them, you'll see videos of them, but then they somehow disappear. Mm, that's a little weird, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a little strange that that has to happen, you know? Because there, I tell you what, I've been watching, there was a show, I don't know if it's still on, I think it is, but it's about these two brothers that travel around to try and find the existence of giants. And... And mm, yep. all over the, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All over the yep. US, I forget if it's on Travel Channel or something like that. Yeah, but, um, it's the History Channel. Whatever. History yep. Channel. There you go. And they go out, man. And they there's a an instance where some town in America, I can't remember offhand, but they had a giant that, like, they had the bones and everything. So they tried to track it down and come to find out the Smithsonian Museum took it. So when they contact the Smithsonian, Smithsonian's like, oh no, we have no nothing like that over here. But mm-hmm. it was they had like some guy like had the evidence that proved that they had it. It was like, come on, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, that that's like some of the legend of uh, the Grand Canyon uh, yeah. sites that have been found. Uh, yeah. And it's actually was, uh, written about in the uh, Arizona papers at the time. Uh, a guy from the Smithsonian goes down there to investigate a claim of caves haven't been found that had evidence of uh, Egyptian and Asian culture influence. Um, he brings some stuff back, and then all of a sudden, Years later, the Smithsonian is like, we never heard of this guy. He never worked for us. Yep. And everything that was taken out of the caves have just since then disappeared. It's crazy how that happens, man. Mm-hmm. Everything. It seems like everything amazing. I mean, even running all the way to humans to Nikola Tesla, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just, they, mm-hmm. these like governments and stuff like that just take, you know, all this information and kind of hide it from us for whatever reason. I don't really know, but. Um, I don't know why if they think it would be panic situation, like especially for like aliens, stuff like that. I, I mean, I could see that maybe, but when it comes to younger, like, you know, little things like not little, but you know what I mean? Giant, mm-hmm. giant stuff like that. Why not? It's for, if it's our history, why not? Well, well it's I not kinda... only that though, but sorry, Aaron, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's, 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 it's not only that though. It's the, it's the fact that I think that the government make it worse as far as, you know, aliens and giants, anything they got there. The, the government try and say, nah, nah, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist. And the more evidence builds up. And then, to, to me, that's frightening people more. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If, if, if there is alien life out there, 
which we all basically believe there is, and yeah. and they are come under visit, then just just say you know look they are out there, they will come in from time to time, uh, but just carry on with normal life. I think the more they try to, for want of a better word, postpone the actual right. announcement, the more the more sort of intrigue and fear is building up in people. Well, you're saying you haven't got this, but yet here's a picture of a UFO. You know what I mean? You're, right. you're saying that these don't exist, but what happened at Roswell? You know what I mean? And people are putting two and two together. And, they're, you know, to me, that's going to cause more widespread panic when it eventually comes out than if they were just to come out 10, yeah. 20 years ago and say, right. Well, yeah, um, I am. Um... In, in the the current issue of A View Beyond, uh, I, I actually was uh, very fortunate to have somebody send me a story in actual uh, images of report of a 1943 UFO incident that happened in England. And this report are actual Royal Air Force document that was recently released. And, you know, this is in 1943 that this happened. So, the you know, I, I know... Roswell is pretty popularized because you know everybody's made movies about it. We've had uh, tons, but, uh, tons, yeah, right. for years. Yeah, and it's not just in America. There's uh, there are some scary cases that I've heard that come out of Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, some that's come out of the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico. So it's interesting to see what will happen when you know that dam finally breaches and there's nothing that the government can do to cover it up. How about this? Okay. There's this new, there was this video, there was this kid on YouTube. Okay. And he was driving and one day on the mountainside, he was filming with his camera and he looked up and with the mountainside, you could see that there was like, it looked like a giant standing on this mountain far, far distance. And this, this figure was real huge. Mm -hmm. And he, he was filming with his camera. He like took his camera out. He's filming it. So he took the road up the mountain with another video, I guess. And a CIA officer stopped him and said, you can't come up here, turn your car around, basically leave. Well, then mm -hmm. he started to get followed. And in another video, he caught a guy outside of his house in a black charger with one of the lights, like a police person, blacked mm -hmm. out, all that stuff. And he runs outside. And when he runs outside, the car peels off and takes away. Then mm -hmm. out of nowhere, he just says, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I faked everything. When he tries to go up to the mountain and like out of nowhere after the mountain, he just says he faked everything. And all of a sudden, he's now on the missing persons report. Nobody knows where he is. Like he's yeah. actually legit missing. Like. So it's like, did they like threaten him? And then he finally said, oh, this is fake. And then they just killed him anyway. You know what I mean? Like, did he keep pursuing it? You know? Well, you know, government secrets have always been a hot topic for controversy and conflict uh, within the conspiracy community. Yeah. And, you know, when you hear things like that, um, is it true? I don't know. Could it have happened? Absolutely. Our government has a long history. World governments all around the world has a long history of disposing of people who threaten the status quo or threaten to expose certain secrets that could, you know, do away with their grip on the position of authority that they may have. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the one similar case like that, and, and I'll, I know a lot of people may have heard of uh, Project Stargate. Yep. Where they tried to make psychic soldiers remote viewing, things like that. There was another project that is kind of, you know, getting some criticism, uh, but it was referred to as the Montauk Project. Yeah. And this is where they took kids and exposed them to extreme and horrific treatment to induce that trigger uh, the trigger that psychic ability that you know they believe we all have at some point yep yeah man mike montauk uh, was very crazy i mean when i read mm -hmm. into that i was i was very shocked that i mean just the things that you know that was involved with that was just absolutely wild i mean there are so many that we can go through and talk about i mean <laughs> off the experiment uh you know just everything there, there's so many conspiracies in general that we could talk about um, that's absolutely wild. And, and even talking about the government, too. I mean, you could talk about them forever because this is most shady. It's it's like dealing with a mobster. You never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's, 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 it's like Area 51 when they say, well, there's nothing in there. 
well, that's fine. There's nothing in there. Why is it so heavily guarded? Right. No. I mean, well, why is there guys on a, on the hill outside waiting for anybody that comes up there and tell them to turn around and go away? Oh, you're why, right. You're you right. Know, if there's nothing in there, you've got nothing to hide. Just say it's an army base and be do, make do with it. But mm -hmm. let, me, let me be devil's advocate and stick up for them for a second. Just think about this for a second. If they had technology that was alien origin, okay, and was way beyond advanced than us, everything nowadays is digital and everybody's like this with their phone, trying to film everybody and do everything. Mm -hmm. So would you want that intelligence leaking out if some idiot with a telephone thinks out their phone because they see a UFO that they're working on or some kind of crazy technology, and then all of a sudden that goes up on YouTube or online or just anywhere and another government sees that and now knows that tech that, that we have. And then what if it's something that can cause a war? So I get where they're coming from, but to hide the existence of another being that's intelligent, I don't care about the whole, whatever you want to do with the tech, that's fine with me. But tell me that we are not the only ones here because it's common sense that we're not with all the planets. I mean, it's just in my opinion, I just think it's stupid even to question it anymore. Um, no, but, it, it, it is, but... And, and saying that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go against you again here on this one. But it's like, you know, to to me, I think they're making more of a mistake by by not coming out and just saying there's nothing there. It's an army base because, uh, like, like you say, you know, you you go to where the gate is and you you park your car there for 24 hours and you see just how many people come to actually have a look. It, you know what I mean? They the talked about storming it the other year. Yeah. So, so the thing is that they're actually, I think, m making the, the general public more, not so much angry, more interested in, in the actual base mm. than, than coming out, you know, if, if, if there is stuff there, it's not the only base with hundreds of floors underground you have in the States. You know what I mean? Move all the right. stuff, move all the stuff out of there to somewhere else and then just say it's a base. Well, but, you know what I mean? The, the, the mm. fact is that the more they guard that place and the more that they turn people away, people's going to th think to themselves, you know, right, well, there's obviously something here and it just piques the interest everywhere then. See, mm -hmm. I, I, I totally got to go get you with it. You, you're very into Area 51. You're very into, like, all that stuff. And I think, like, that, like, what you think where they keep everything, I believe that that place has been long gone. They chose not to use that place so long ago. I mean, look at Bob Lazar. Everybody brings up Area 51 because they think Bob Lazar came from Area 51 when he didn't. It was from S2, which is miles away from... Mm -hmm from Area 51. So people mistake this so much and Area 51 gets all this hype. The government one would have moved all of the alien technology if they had it out of Area 51 the minute they heard someone was going to storm the base, number one. But they moved that stuff years ago because they knew right after someone leaks it, they have to get it rid of it immediately so that if someone does come and check, they're not going to find anything. Exactly, but then that's what I'm saying. So if that's the case, then why are they still guarding it? Why are they still hiding no, it's not. They have to guard it because it's a military base. Yeah, but they're, no, they're so still. They're, installment. They have to technically guard it because totally, like, no one's allowed on a military base unless you're military. No, but again, with that, mm. from what I've learned on it, you, even if you are military, sometimes you still don't get in. You have to have special clearance. Oh, yeah. It's not like a regular military. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I get what you're saying, though. Like, why is it? Why is everything so secret? Why does it have to be that way? And I don't understand that either. But. I do also play the devil's advocate. Like, okay, I kind of understand what they're coming from, but to well, lie to us, go ahead. Eric. There is a thing, and I, I've met some exceptional individuals who practice uh, magic or illusion. And when I think about Area 51, the one thing I always think of is misdirection. Yes. Well, I mean, not to say that Area 51 doesn't play a significant role in um, the UFO culture or even in uh, its actual involvement with it. Um, but I also feel like sometimes, because I mean, it's, 
when you re- when you look at government operation throughout the past, even back when technology wasn't that good, governments have done exceptionally well in keeping secret. So the idea that Area 51 would just turn out to be kind of a flop and uh, it's out and everybody knows about it seemed a little unusual. So I think that the government just kind of pushes that idea on Area 51 to keep our interest in that rather than somewhere else. Because there are other places around the U.S. that would serve a much more strategic location than the middle of a dried up lake that can be seen from the satellite view. I agree. Um, again, I still think that Area 51 at some point, you know, like I said, did serve a significant, you know, part of the operation in, you know, intelligence and reverse engineering and things like that. Uh, I just think that the big secret, the big, big stuff that we all want to know about, it's not there anymore. I mean, you're absolutely right. I think that's the same thing. I think that it's all, sorry, I have family in the background being a little loud if you could hear them. Um, but anyway, uh, I think you're absolutely right. Like there's 100%, I think you're right. I think it's all in this direction. I think that people have been so long misled about that one place and other places that have been so significant. I believe that once that that significant event happens, they're so smart and intelligent, they move it. They get that mm-hmm. out of there because they know for years on end, someone's going to come to that place. I mean, it's just common sense. I mean, look how many people still go to Area 51 overnight and go up on the mountains and try to peek in and, you know, mm-hmm. they're not capturing anything, but yeah. it's the thrill of it. And, you know, it's like, oh, let's go, you know. Right. I do. I will say I do know for a fact that they do have uh, guarded aerial testing out there. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think that, you know, like with their uh, anti-gravity technology. I don't think they'll test that there, but I do feel like they do test some of the stuff they reverse engineer with certain aerodynamics or uh, certain materials or even propulsion system that work on physical principles. I think they, those they test at Area 51 just because it is so wide open. Uh, you got a clear line of view for miles, so it's easy to observe. Um, yeah, Area 51, at, that's one of those places where you know something happened there, yeah. but you can't put your finger on it, yeah. and whatever evidence was there, you can't get to it anymore. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, our viewer, Kelly, our brother, uh, steve wife, says, government tries to hide the truth from all of us, but we all know the truth. The facts of different dimensions, reality, spirits, and other forms of beings are out there, so why try and hide it? When we know, we know. Spiritual beings of any tier will guide us to use different types of de-ices, uh, or devices, gateways, portals, mirrors, and other means to show us they are here. She's absolutely right. I mean, we have uh, all the evidence when we go out and we investigate. I mean, I, I do a lot of spirit box work and, you know, I have multiple videos that I've got captured with just undeniable proof that something is talking back. Do I know mm-hmm. it's a spirit? No. But I just know from what they tell me that they're spirits. <coughs> you do, know? Do, not do, do not think that, if, you know, say if there is, I mean, I honestly believe and I know that, that oh, you I believe. Do, yeah. That, Right. But do, do you not think with, with these other beings that are out there, you know, and instead of, you know, painting them to be not necessarily the bad guys and stuff, but, you know, I think as a, as a, as much, well, as a race, really, I think we, we could learn, probably learn so much from them as I believe they're visiting to try and learn off us. They're obviously coming from a from a, a lot longer distance away than we can get to, so straight away, there's there's something that we could learn off them, like not so much time travel, but you know to, to be able to travel at, at speeds that, that we only think are you know mythical. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that that we yeah. could actually learn from them, you know, and instead of instead of just sending, you know, planes or, or whatever kind of things they're making up to, to have a look at what it is. Right. I think they're, they're, they're paint, sometimes I think the government paints it in a way 
to the well, public that you know what I mean? Oh, no, 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 sorry, I wasn't trying to offer apologies. I, I was just gonna say, I was gonna say what Kelly said. Think about this, man. If there's other dimensions, right, that we know about because through string theory, all this type of stuff from through science, that we believe there's other dimensions, parallel universes, all this type of stuff. Um, what if as an investigator, what if when we're communicating with these devices and we are communicating through frequency, vibration, whatever it may be, through these device using these devices like you know, hack radios, uh spirit PSB7 style like that, and then also apps, certain things. What if these if these beings are dimensional? What if we're not talking to a spirit? What if we're talking to another dimensional being that we don't even know what it is? Because whatever we're talking to has intelligence to talk back with intelligence, to hear yeah. us, to say it sees us to knows what we're thinking half the time. Because if you think about it, have you ever got an answer right before you were said it? Like the whole question? Have you ever had that, Aaron? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I actually have a video on YouTube of that happening. See, that's awesome. I want to actually, mm -hmm. can I pull that up? Um, yeah, you want to go onto YouTube? Okay. Hold on yeah, one second. Um, Let me, let me uh, share this quick. Okay. I'm going to see if I can pull it up directly and send you the link so you don't have to search for it. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. It's going to make me leave the site if I try to, for some reason, present my thing. Yeah, I mean, you can... Uh, well, I, I can tell you exactly what it was. And... Um, hold on. Oh, man. It's, yeah, I got to go on my Chrome settings. I'll have to do that after. I apologize, Aaron. That's right. We're going to have you on anyway because there's a lot I want to talk to you about. But, yeah, so talk a little bit about that video. So, I mean, I was tell I was saying right before you were asked the whole question, um, you, you know, would get an answer. So I'm wondering if these things know our, our thoughts. You know what I mean? I mean, so tell us a little bit about that video. There, there is a good possibility for that. Um, the video is, uh, is myself and Neil, one of the co-founders for Nightwatch, and we were at a place called Carlos Avery. Carlos Avery is a wildlife management area. Beautiful place, uh, but it's got a really messed up history. A double murder in 1912, uh, a shootout between gangsters and the state police in 1954. Uh, a six-year-old boy was kidnapped and beat to death with a tire iron in 1980. Uh, a woman was burned alive in a domestic dispute in 1989. Uh, there was a body found out there in 2020. And for years, this place has had a reputation for being a potential body dump site for local gangsters or biker gangs during the 90s. And we were out there. This was right at right around Halloween. Cause it, in a two week period, we were out there five times doing some investigating, getting some unbelievable evidence that we would not get at any other time of the year. One of those was an EM field that surrounded the entire vehicle. Level five, nonstop, wouldn't back off. And that's with the vehicle off. Wow. And it moved. Um, but the case that we're talking about is we were doing a, uh, a, a kind of like a yes, no session. He got an EM detector that he built and he set it up. And if you, you know, it's like a proximity sensor, you get close to it, the alarm goes off. And we were using it as a yes, no yeah. device. And mm -hmm. he was saying, you know, can you make this go off? It would go off. He goes, can you turn it off? It would turn off. And just as he was about to say, can you turn it back on? It came right back on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, see? And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm telling you, because it's either that or my other theory about it is that these things not can read our mind. What if it's us? What if we're psychically... Predict, mm -hmm. not predicting, but manifesting our thoughts into this device through frequency somehow that we don't even understand yet. And it's, it's, I mean, it's all theory, of course, but I mean, I do, my personal belief, I do believe, I believe, you know, where I'm talking. Well, to there's plenty of merit to that. Um, start off with uh, the dimensional. I actually have a theory and I wish the technology was available to prove this, but, and this deals specifically with uh, residual haunting. When you look at religion and physics, they all have a similar idea about uh, different levels of existence, different dimension. And what if, if you have a timeline and they all flow in the same way, but there's something that happens so traumatic, so impactful that it creates a pinch point 
And what's happening is what when you see these residual hauntings, you're seeing a light pass through like a CD skip, which would explain why it's always the same person doing the same thing at the same time in the same place. Now, so you're, act, you're seeing something that happened on multiple levels. But here's the question. Now, you said residual. So are you saying that it's just residual energy that's left over, basically, that we're seeing a playback of this time in, in space, basically? Right. Or, but not or, just in our reality, but, but in as other regular reality. Spirits, but as regular spirits, though, are, do you believe that they're also a pinch in time? Or what's your theory on them? Um, when it comes to inner uh, intelligent spirit, I think those are actually... Uh, one of two things. One is that they're actually the spirit of whoever that's left behind that's communicating with us in real time, mm. or you know, by maybe a slight time delay. Because yeah. I mean, we've all seen it happen. Sometimes they happen before we get the question out, or sometimes they'll answer the question much yeah. later. Yeah. Or uh, it's something that we we mentioned before. Something that I've written an article about the possibility of egregores or PK entities. Things that are created by our own innate psychic ability, something that we project. Um, which, in that case, if it's an egregore, that's usually something that's pretty easy to, you know, dispel. But PK entities are a lot tougher because that's connected to something that happened, uh, connected to a very deep psychological trauma. And in order to get rid of that, you have to have that person. Um, you know, uh, address whatever that trauma may be, come to terms with something in order to be able to break that PKA entity connection to the person. And as far as psychic ability is in all of that, yeah, I am convinced that we had a much deeper connection and awareness of that. And that as time went on between mainstream religion and ruling classes, they began to tell us that it's nonsense. And that centuries and centuries of being told that it's nonsense, that it's just hooey or that it's all fake. We've managed to convince ourselves or trick ourselves into thinking that we don't have it when in actuality we do. No, I completely agree with that, man. And I, I think that, you know, a lot of thousands of years through religion and stuff has stopped us from finding out our true potential as well, expanding consciousness. And I think now is a big time in, in the world, in the, the whole world where consciousness is raising. I don't know why I just feel that way, but I feel like a lot of people, and I'm not thinking that way because people are woke or whatever this whole crap movement thing is. I don't really, right. I don't really talk about that, but I'm talking about, um, woke as in your consciousness is being raised. And I believe that the whole earth is going through some kind of shift right now in that consciousness, because there's a lot of people that are waking up and seeing this side of things and actually starting to explore it more. I mean, look how many teams mm. in the last 10 years have just started to boom. I mean, we went from a thousand teams in maybe 2002 to like 20 million teams. So it's like, right. I'm so glad to see people getting into this. But all these different theories, and I mean, we can go on for hours about them because they're so fascinating. Like, I love what you said about the pinch in time because that makes so much sense. Like, if we are on what Einstein and everybody always talked about, this time-space reality, and, it, you know, you make that – it's like making that pinch. And I can just totally understand what you're saying, like a CD skip. That was a great way to describe that. So I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm just going to say there, if I can just touch on something. Sorry, I had another way a minute ago. Uh, okay. Just to – I just want to go back to what we were talking about for one more question. But sure. do you not think if if there is well, so I keep saying if there is, but these these beings and and different universes and different planets that house life and stuff, if if, if they are able to make, you know, things that that we can't make, for instance, we you know we should be using that to our advantage. And it may sound yeah, far out, right, but but say for instance, right. Mm. That they're telling us that global warming is destroying the earth, right? They're, now, basically, in, a, in an ideal world, for want of a better word, mm. we would we would then move to another planet, right? But we can't do that because we can't leave our solar system at the minute, and not there's not yet. another planet. Well, not yet. Yeah, not yet. With but, the help of Space Force, we can do anything. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, what, 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 what I'm saying, it, it, no, it might sound funny, but what I'm saying is, yeah. if, the, if these 
interdimensional beings can can make things like you know gateways and portals and stuff to transport them from where they are to us should we not be using them to try and get one made from where we are to another planet i know it's going to sound really far out but another planet somewhere that will house life if we're if this planet's in danger of being totally destroyed well a, a couple of things with that uh one and, and this is not a dig at the uh global warming position we want to get that out right away uh but one thing that we have to understand is that you know our planet along with the solar system has always gone through some of these most violent and dynamic changes so the global warming, while I think we have a hand in it, we're not we're not responsible for it. It's not our fault. But when it comes to being able to reach out to other planet, I have to th- I have to ask: Are they really making those ship travel all that distance physically, or you know, if we talk about what portals, is there? a technology that's available, not to us, but to other life out there, where they're able to fold space, being able to travel without moving. This would explain how some of these, you know, if, if you ascribe to the uh, alien theory, this would explain how so many of them are able to travel such massive distance in such a short amount of time. Because it would take us an entire lifetime, if not more, just to get from Earth to Pluto. Our life expectancy is not that good. Yeah. So how would the alien pull this off successfully? They would have to find some way to surpass time. And that would be either being faster than light or folding space, more or less. Yeah, because my my, my argument in this has been, and AJ will tell you, <clears throat> you watch any of these movies, right? And for instance, right, you play, do you play Call of Duty? I, I have in the past. I haven't recently. Right. So if you play on the uh, on the zombies game of it on the map mm-hmm. and they have teleporters, right? Now, mm-hmm. now where, where did the idea for these, for instance, come from? It wasn't just someone sitting in front of a computer one day and thought, I know, I'll make this thing up and I'll make it look like all, with all these springs and wires and, and stuff. And, and I'll call it a teleporter. Uh, you know, to, to, to me, these things, and whether it's in Area 51 or, or wherever, these things are being prototyped somewhere. And, and, they're, and this is where the ideas are coming from. Because a lot of people, some people can be smart, but I don't think you're not smart. Listen, no, I wasn't. <laughs> no, not, 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 Listen, you have, the theory, not smart. you have this theory that like all these interstellar movies that where they come up with these ideas and it's the government. And yes, I totally believe your theory on that. But I just want to say I've been wanting a coat that bakes bacon or grilled cheeses, but I haven't got my wish. And I have that on. I can make that into a little movie. Yeah, definitely. So where did that idea come from? Mm. But, yeah, but the point is, right, no it, really the, 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 point, the point is that if, if they... If they are are putting these things in movies and games and stuff like that, the idea, in my opinion, had to come from somewhere. This is not me being crazy, Robin. This is me. Oh, it is. Well, well yeah, I suppose. But this is me <laughs> what, what, what I totally believe in. These things don't just pop into someone's head and a name for them just pop into someone's head and think, right, we'll do that. I, I think there's things like this that are being that are being made or or at least being uh, prototyped. And mm-hmm. if, if if that's the case and they can do that, who's to say that this isn't also as well as I agree with you, Aaron? This isn't also how these beings are are traveling because they maybe they have this technology. It's probably. Right. It's probably like an like an analog TV to us for them. It's probably mm-hmm. you know old hat now, but maybe this is how they're traveling. 
You know who I want to get on this show really badly, and if he's gonna, I don't know, he'll probably not see this, but if he did see this um, through one of our friends, I want to have on Dr. Greer come on because Dr. Greer and Seti, um, that whole group, even the people from around the world, the things they've captured by doing these meditations, calling in these beings. He has a photo of an alien standing behind someone, and the person was healed. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was their knee or something in the, like from the photo that they had with the knee was healed or whatever, but there was a guy that was with them that had, um, his hearing here healed. He was deaf from like, since he was a child or whatever for many years. And, um, he ended up hearing again right after this experience. And I think that was the picture they captured with this alien. And when you zoom in and see this alien's head, it's like a triangle. It's, it's crazy looking. And I really would love to get him on the show because, having a bunch of these conversations we've talked before with a guest and I believe it was Jesse Marcel the third who said that, yes, these disinformation officers did go to Hollywood and did want to release. they have released videos about it being a, you know, like a, um, a national security type thing with all these movies like Mars attacks and things like that. Like, so right. you know, I think I'm pretty sure that was during that, that episode when he said to us like disinformation officers do, you know, obviously try to put it out to make it easier on us if something was to happen. Right. Well, you know, um, just to kind of, you know, uh, g give your, your, your thoughts on credibility, Robin, uh, there is a famous case and it was actually aired on, uh, uh, ancient aliens. Um, during world war two, Hitler had established a group called the Ananarbi. Uh, this was a, an elite force, uh, part of the military and also had influences in the way politics played, but they were, they were, they were, their core root was all in the supernatural. And they had several experiments going. One of them was known as the Glocke, which translates to the bell. And for years, nobody could figure out what the thing was. It, you know, a lot of people thought it was a, a, some sort of anti-gravitational drive technology. Some people thought it was a teleportation device, whatever. When Hitler was... At the end of his reign, when when the Nazi party was falling, when Germany was about to surrender, this experiment disappeared. Mm. Nobody knows what happened. Thirty some years later, in 1950, there was a device or a, a machine that was caught flying around Keckburg, Pennsylvania. Now, what's interesting about this is the way they describe the Keckberg UFO is the exact same shape as the Glocke from 30 years prior. Yeah. The theory is that when they realize that they're about to be caught, they tried to launch this program in a last-ditch effort to either make it a success or hide it, and something went wrong, and it snapped from 1930s Germany to 1950s USA. Wow. Because it, it, when they said it crashed, it, it, they said in Keckberg it was flying around like it didn't know, like the pilot didn't know how to control it. And it ended up crashing. Wow. U.S. government showed up, took everything away. End of story. Keckberg, Pennsylvania still has this event that celebrates that day to this day. Wow, really? Mm hmm. Oh, that is so cool. The question is do you know what day it is? Because we have to go out there. Uh, I can find out. Oh, that would be cool, Aaron. We got we got to go out there. That'd be awesome. It's um, kind of like it's kind of like that story. I, I was watching a a program on on TV. Uh, no, to it's not your soap ops. We don't want to hear about your soap operas. <laughs> no, it's not a soap opera. I, I was thinking, no, it's not an adult movie either. No, no. <clears throat> what what it was, it was a a thing about this. Uh, this plane that had taken off, I don't know whether that program manifest is based on it, but it was about a, a plane that had taken off from... Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think it was taken off from New York. And like 10 yeah. years later, it went missing. And 10 years later, it landed in Peru or something. Yeah, and I think it was like, yeah, it was down near, yeah, it was down near somewhere near Miami, somewhere down there. Because when they landed, the guy got so freaked out that he just... <laughs> took the plane took and back into the sky again and took off. Yeah. yeah. I remember that, that story. Cause I just watched a video on YouTube about it. And they were saying that the guy, like he like freaked out. Cause he was like, what are you talking about? This many years went by and they had mm -hmm. like police waiting for them on the tarmac. And he just took off. He took off. Mm -hmm. I think it was with everyone in it too. Yeah. yeah. There, there, there was one from New York to Miami, but there was also one 
and it was way off course. It was somewhere in South America. It might have been Colombia or something like that. And it, it, it landed, and like like it, I, I'm. Well, listen. I, I, think, I think what it was. I think what it was. Sorry. I think what it was. If, if I remember correctly, it was coming in the land, and it radioed through mm. to get clearance to land, as as planes do. And the <clears throat> the guy basically in the air traffic control, I think anyway, had looked and thought, well, this plane's not on our on our manifest for today's. Incomings and outgoings and stuff. So mm -hmm. well, while he, while he had it, I think he had it circling above the airport, and it basically asked someone, you know, look, this plane isn't due to come here today, and they'd done a bit of research and they actually realised that there was like ten or fifteen years since this plane had taken off, and they they'd given. I think I'm trying to get it correctly now. I think what happened was they gave it clearance to land because they wanted to see this for themselves that this was the plane. And they gave it clearance to land and it came down and landed. And I think it, I think it was still taxiing and the air traffic control had said something along the lines of, you know, do you realise now you've been missing for 15 years and this, that and the other. And apparently it just turned around on the thing and took off again. Yeah, there's several stories like that, and, and I actually think that there's a slight possibility that that may be what happened to the Malaysia airliner that disappeared a few years back. They still have no idea where that thing is today. Well, yeah, well, see that, see that, and I, I took a lot of interest in that. That, to me, I don't think that flew off course and crashed into the sea. No, you right. know what? There's actually a theory that's going around on on YouTube, man. Okay, and I I just watched this today too. That's so weird that you're talking about this. That they beat the, the air pilot that they thought was in. They thought the air pilot was in on this. Okay, and they they landed the plane somewhere because okay, where the plane went missing, they said that they ended up going south. When they went south, they parked mm -hmm. on this. They parked on this airplane after they went missing off the radar. So the air pilot was in on it, according to this theory. And a bunch of gangsters basically killed. They, he went up to forty-five thousand feet for fifteen minutes, killed the passengers, like basically docked at this island. They took all the cargo because the cargo was worth over a million dollars, I guess, that was on board with people and everything included. This is just a theory, but right. all this stuff. And then they put this on YouTube, and I tell you what, some of the stuff that they had on there made you think, like, you know what? What if that did happen? Because I don't really know anything about altitude or planes or anything, and why he would survive and we wouldn't, but. I mean, I just found that really wild. Like, what if something like that happened? Because why did they not find it? I mean, if they crashed in the ocean, I get it. But there was no debris field. There was nothing. Yeah. Usually there's something floating. Yeah. Now, now the thing is, right? Here, here's another one for it, right? The if that that pilot's in control of the plane, right? Nobody else apart from the co-pilot and him can control that plane. It can't be controlled from the ground. It can't be. It can't be landed from the ground. It can't be controlled, right? So if that pilot was suicidal, as they say he is, and I'm not trying to upset anybody who's watching who might have relatives, or I'm not trying to upset anybody, but if if that was the case and that pilot was suicidal and he was going to fly that plane south across the ocean until it ran out of fuel, yeah, why do you have to turn your transponder off? Would he not get... And no offense, I don't mean this to sound nasty, would he not get more of a thrill out of having the all the air traffic controls and different areas knowing where they are, knowing that there's nothing they can do? You know, because worst case scenario is they're gonna send someone up to shoot it down, it's gonna come down anyway. No, so I'm the thing is, to, to me, the the stuff that the, the, all the things on it that were all turned off strategically, might I say, turned off one after another at yeah. certain certain minutes. To, to me, they were turned off, and that plane was landed somewhere. Mm -hmm. See, you know, that's why I'm saying, like this theory that they were talking about about you know this pilot after they went off the radar, they we went up to forty five thousand feet, killed these uh, passengers. Um, and then came down, docked this plane because of the cargo that was worth inside of it. 
um, everything that was worth inside the plane. And, they, you know, these monsters or whatever got rid of these bodies. And the weird part about it is these families called these phones for five days straight. Their phones were on, which doesn't make any sense, because if your phone crashed in the ocean or if you crashed on land, even say on land, your, your phone may survive. Just say. But in mm -hmm. ocean, your phone's not going to survive. I mean, maybe if you have an Apple and it's at the bottom of the sea, I don't know if you still get service. If you do, hell yeah, Verizon or AT&T. But I mean, <laughs> you know, I highly doubt you're gonna, you know what I mean? Especially with an impact right. that heavy. Yeah, well, that um, there, there, there are just so many variables to that case there is. that, you know, this is going to be one of those mysteries like Flight 19. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, the Britannia. But, but do, do you not think with the technology these days, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to find that? No, there isn't. There yeah. isn't. And, and this guy, this guy that found on that reunion island off Africa, this guy that found the piece that was supposedly off the wing with the same serial numbers, who's not who's not to say that if this plane was commandeered and landed somewhere, certain parts were taken off it, thrown into the ocean. Let them wash up somewhere. That that that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it you know it's a good way to mislead people, mislead investigators. It's, it's um, a debris field. If that goes into the ocean, even if most of it sinks to the bottom, there's bound to be a debris field. There right. must be. Now, as far as the idea of having the technology to find answers, um, for as pretty and fun as our gadgets are. I am not convinced that we are anywhere near the level that we need to be to be able to, you know, put a stamp at a definite yes or no on a certain situation. Uh, a good example of that would be our technology in interpreting ancient data. I mean, we have this notion that ancient Egypt or ancient Sumer is the beginning of civilization. And, and, and that's been widely accepted by mainstream academia. The problem is, uh, there is now growing evidence that there was civilization that predate that by as much as 10,000 years. Wow. So, and, and the reason we don't have evidence of that is you got to think about, you know, the, the comet impact or the series of comet impact that wiped out uh, 60% of the megafauna that they found in Greenland, uh, the glaciers. Nothing survived the weight of a glacier. So if there was any civilization that ended up being bowled over by a glacier, of course, we're not going to find evidence. Of course, we're not going to see human remains or ruined. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with uh, massive flooding. If anybody, would, if if you talk to anybody that's ever survived a tsunami, they'll tell you just how devastating a tsunami is. And a tsunami is uh, is, is a puddle ripple compared to some of the flooding that had taken place in history. So. With everything, when, when, when people say, don't you think we have the technology, you know, our technology is great, but it is not going to get us the answers we need just yet. No. Yeah. no, no I, agree. I totally agree. 110%. I'm I, just, I, just think, I just think about, uh, what, just before we go off the subject, while we're still on that missing Malaysia Airlines flight, mm -hmm is again with the conspiracies why were they searching in the complete wrong area when they were constantly being told you're searching in the wrong area but they continue yeah. to search there uh, and it, it seems them it seems to me from what i can make out of programs that i've watched that they searched away from the area that it could be until the battery in the uh black box ran out yeah, it, that whole situation, uh, along with give me, along with Roswell and with anything that we encounter, that you know are always trying to be discredited or disproved, it's the same thing mainstream media does. It comes down to one thing: sell the story, yeah. even if it's fake, sell it. And that's basically what we have. What we have here with the Malaysia case, I really think that you know they were looking in the wrong place just so they could have some sort of groundwork for a story that they could you know feed to people and just completely mislead them. Yeah, because they were the 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 made they made a point out of mentioning quite a bit about the the battery life 
in the uh, black box and the transponder, mm -hmm. you know, because I think it was 30 days or something once it, there's something like that where it was given like a constant ping out. And if they, yeah. if they go over the top of it, they can pick that up. Yeah. And those black boxes are for, for where we're at technologically, they're pretty damn tough. Yeah. That's why I was wondering why, like, they haven't even found it. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. haven't even got anything. Like, that's why it doesn't make any sense. Go back right. to that Air France one that flew from Brazil and crashed in the Atlantic. It was found, what, within a couple of days? Yeah. Yep. The, the deb they found it because of the debris field. And that so, was a large debris field to cover. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't tell me that that thing went into the water and didn't leave one trace. Right. It's, it, it, <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No. I don't know if you actually know or not, Aaron, but there's another another quick case I'll, I'll say to you about uh, the, the professional footballer uh, that was flying from France to Cardiff in Wales. Mm. Did you hear about that one? No. It was a, it was a couple of years ago now. It was a, an Argentine footballer. He had signed uh, for Cardiff and Wales from uh, a French team. And right. Basically, he'd, he'd flown, he'd come over to Cardiff, he had signed his contract and stuff. He flew back to France for the weekend to get whatever pieces he needed and say goodbye to his teammates from over there. And then he was flying back over. Now, he, he flew in a little private plane and the plane crashed in the English Channel. His body was found inside the plane. The pilot's body wasn't there and he still hasn't been found. And not only that, but apparently the pilot A wasn't allowed to, to fly any passengers and take money, which he did. Apparently, he wasn't allowed to fly at night because he was colorblind and it was flying at mm. night. There, there, was, there was a lot of things that, that, that basically this guy should not have been flying this plane. And it was, it, it, it's, it's, I don't know, it, it's a hard one, but they, they found the wreckage of the plane within, a, within, I think it was a week or two weeks. They, they dove down. They got his. They got the footballer's body out of the plane. Mm -hmm. The pilot. Yeah, a lot. You know, a lot of times when you hear the cases of you know a key person being missing, you know, most of the time it's just you know uh, a fluke. You know, they fell out and were washed away or whatever. But then you have those rare cases where uh, it's it's like the the locked room mystery. How did the dead body end up inside of a locked room and he didn't commit suicide? You know, uh, so you see those cases a lot with uh, air, uh, with aeronautical instances, um, that flight being one of them. Uh, Malaysia flight, flight 19. There was another flight that happened in Alaska. Um, a senator disappeared. Now, the, the prevailing theory is that he crashed, but again, no hit in the black box, no wreckage, nothing. Um, you know, and it's not just with planes. You, you get that with boat. The number of boats that disappear in key locations around the world, not just the Bermuda Triangle, but in key locations around the world, is, should be enough to make all of us, whether we're paranormal investigators, scientists, um, government officials, it should make us all take a closer look at what's happening out there. And that's oh, one, yeah. of the reasons, one of the reasons why, you know, I with this magazine, I really want to try to get all of us coming together and put our theories together. And if we, you know, if we end up talking with a loud enough voice, somebody somewhere is going to be like, okay, let's take a look and validate yeah. everything we, we believe in. Even if it turns out that we're all wrong and it was something else, at least we know because we took the time to look at it. Exactly. It's like like you say with all these boats that go missing, 
yet they can send a submarine down two and a half miles underwater and find mm-hmm. a Titanic. But the, but they can't find these these boats that sank in water that was nowhere near as deep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I can't. Sorry, I agree with what you're saying, Aaron. Like, we should definitely, um, you know, have everyone on, on, like, from that comes on your, you know, magazine. Uh, all those theories, man, can definitely make a difference. And I really do believe that one day we're going to have the science community look at this whole field and realize that, you know what, there was something to this. Whether it's energy, whether it's spirits, dimensional beings, whatever it may be. Um, this field will definitely get looked at if more people keep waking up to this field. But real quick, I want to show um, Aaron's um, page right now for the um, magazine for a view beyond AVB uh, AVBmagazine.com. Hold on one quick, one sec. Let me come over here. This is the official website. Mm-hmm. You can head over to it. Hold on. Once it loads for me, it's not going up and down. Hold on. There we go. So we got all this here. I'll actually play this real quick. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Freezing on us. That's all right. That's the uh, promo for the Global Ghost Hunt. Yeah, I wanted to show it, but that's all right. I'll go down on this. I'll, I'll exit out of this, but... Anyway, so we got everything on this page. Head over here. Um, now, Aaron, this is free, right? Absolutely free, yep. See, that's what I love about this, man. This magazine right here is absolutely free. Um, go there. Go to check it out. It's right below in our in our ticker. It's www.avbmagazine.com, correct, Aaron? Yep. Awesome. So go there. Help us make a difference. You know, if you're a paranormal researcher, uh, please get involved. Send Aaron some messages. Um, Aaron, how can they get a hold of you if they want to get on the magazine? Yeah, uh, you can stop by uh, a view beyond the group on Facebook, and um, you can reach out to me there, or you can send me uh, your information at a view beyond magazine at gmail dot com. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate that. And custom screen printing, I appreciate your support. We we all do. Um, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for the thumbs up and the share out. I truly appreciate that. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, we thank all of our viewers that are watching. I just wanted to say thank you, Aaron, for coming on with us, man. Um, right now I I got to actually, but, um, yeah, man, no, come on with us again, man, please. For sure. For sure. Um, but we're going to have Aaron on because we want to talk about a view beyond more. Um, so we're going to have him on specially as a guest, but I want him to come on talk more with us. So you better come on, brother. I'm going to have to hound you. I'm easy to find. Good. <laughs> also as well, AJ, I, I want to say on here, you sort of touched on it the other day, but it gave me an idea. If there's anybody what, that's watching this or watching it who knows someone who who's into their conspiracies or or who who knows a lot about this kind of stuff, and and you want to come on, drop one of us a message. Yeah, you can go to uh, you can go to talkingwiththesource at gmail dot com. That's talkingwiththesource at gmail dot com, and reach out to us if you're a paranormal researcher or just you know into conspiracies, have paranormal experiences, anything. Reach out to us. We'd love to have you on the show. Um, yes, yeah, I, I think what it is actually, I said that wrong. It's, if, if anybody is, uh, he's slow, people. He's slow. Don't worry. I am. It's all I right. am. Uh, if anybody can can relate to anything that we talk about, is that a better way to put it? If yeah, anybody, that, that, if anybody can relate to what the the topics that we're talking about in more detail, or yeah. or have or have more detail yeah. about topics yeah. like that, come on. Yeah, please, absolutely, one hundred and ten percent, and anything, medium, anybody, uh, UFOologist, anybody, it doesn't matter. Please come on. We like all researchers. We we. Love to bring everybody in. We call this a family, Um, you know, so we have like our brother Aaron here. We've had Nando on, who's our brother. Brian, um, who's from Hunophobia, who's been on, who's like a brother. I mean, we just- Um, Brother Mark, who's watching. Yes, brother Mark too, who's watching, brother, which he's gonna be, you know, coming back on soon because we have a lot to talk about musically. Um, But, you know, good stuff. I wanna talk real real quick though, before we go, about a giveaway that we're doing. 
Um, there's going to be a giveaway that we're going to do. It's going to be two things. It's going to be um, some sticker giveaway, and we're going to do another giveaway that's going to be – it's all going to be in one. But the winner of the stickers is also going to win um, a guest spot to come on and be a co-host with us on a show of their choice. Um, so we just want to get our viewers involved as much as we can and, uh, keep you guys, you know, and, you know, enjoying the, uh, podcast and, uh, keep you guys interested. So, um, like I said, feel free to get involved in the comments. Always. We always want to hear your, what you got to say. We always want to answer your questions. Um, also for our guests, same thing, but thank you guys so much for watching. What happens if, what happens if say Mark wins it, wins the, the draw and wins the slot on the podcast with enlightened souls paranormal? He's got to introduce himself. <laughs> yeah, basically, right? I know. Isn't that crazy? Right? I know. I was thinking about that. I'm like, what if one of our brothers wins, you know, or like, you know, one of our sisters wins? Like, how do we bring them on and say, oh, hey, you know, we've you've seen them before, but they won the sticker giveaway and <laughs> everyone's going to be so mad at that person. It's going to be great. So I guess you guys can't enter. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. If, if you're watching, if you're watching Bob Lazar, contact us. Absolutely. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'm An I'm AJ uh, Capasso, host of Talking with the Source. Robin from Half Earn Paranormal and Talking with the Source. And Aaron from Review Beyond Magazine. Good stuff, guys. Thank so thank you so much again, Aaron. I appreciate you for coming on. Again, thank you for having me. Thank you. No worries. Go and visit uh, www.avbmagazine.com. Till next time, this has been Talking with the Source. Later.